So everyone's aware that if we want to make a change to this command, like let's say we want this to say hello world instead of hello, let's go ahead and save this. And we go back to Discord and go ahead and run the command slash hello. You can see this change isn't actually reflected. And in order to get that change, we'll have to go back to Visual Studio Code and we'll actually have to restart the bot in order for this change to happen. Now that can get really, really um, kind of annoying when you're making constant changes over and over again and you have to restart your bot every, you know, let's say 30 seconds just to make a, a tiny little change. I'm going to show you today how you can make this process a lot simpler with a simple reload command, which I have on every single one of my bots. And I highly recommend that you have it on yours too, because it's going to save you a bunch of time and ultimately just make you more efficient when making your Discord bots. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So heading over to our main.py file, let's go ahead and create this reload command. So down here, I'm going to do a client dot tree dot command. And by the way, if you're unfamiliar on um, slash commands in general and how to make them as I'm making the one right now, um, I do have another video over slash commands, which dives into exactly, it's a pretty longer video that dives into everything about slash commands that you need to know. Uh, so I convert these regular commands into slash commands. Um, the difference between slash commands inside of cogs and slash commands just um, in a regular file. Um, so yeah, that video is really nice. If you're unfamiliar with slash commands, I recommend checking that out first if you kind of uneducated on slash commands or if you just need to know more information about them. Um, so yeah, give me a moment to create this command. Async def reload interaction, just with that interaction. And then all I'm going to pass in is the cog that you want to reload. And I'll do it of type literal. So I don't know if I've spoken about this, but type literal will allow us to have that selection menu of the different options. So we actually get to specify our options. Um, and by the way, I'm getting this just from typing input literal. And you place literal here with a list of all your different options. So in here, I'm going to put each one of the options that I have in my self.cogs list. Or as you can see in our setup hook, we actually take each extension in the self.cogs list and then we load it. This is how we're loading it. So I'm going to take each one like this and just copy it straight into here. And this is what we're able to load and reload. And I'm going to make it capitalized just so it looks better. Um, but yeah, that's just my preference. Uh, so yeah, now we're able to select one of the two cogs that we've already previously loaded on the setup hook to reload. And how we're going to do this, I'm going to go ahead and quickly show you the documentation for the function that's actually going to allow us to reload each extension. So there is this nice, easy command, very simple await reload extension name package now you don't have to you don't have to worry about that that's explained down here but all you have to do is pass in the name just the same exact way that we pass in load extension uh, you're going to pass in the name and if you read about it it says simply uh excuse me atomically reloads extension this replaces the extension with the same extension only refreshed aka reloading it this is equivalent to unloading it and then loading it except that in an atomic way and then it talks about if it fails what happens and all these different um all these different exceptions that can be raised and then the parameters but all we have to worry about is the none and it explains how to um, format it so for example if you're trying to reload a command in the folder cogs and then you have another folder called foo you would have to put cogs dot foo dot the file name you wouldn't put slashes like this you would actually have to put dots but yeah that's just simple um going to different folders so yeah this is the function that we're going to be using let's go ahead and go back to visual studio code and get that get that into our command excuse me so going back, if we go ahead and just do await client, because it is um, a method off of client dot reload underscore extension, and we can do name is equal to uh, cog plus cog dot lower. The reason why I'm doing dot lower is because my file names are lowercase and then I'm putting them at uppercase just so they look better. But as long as the case the uppercase and lowercase matches of this of the file name and then what's here that's all that really matters um, but just for uniformity if you want to do cog download just be sure that's fine um so yeah wait find a reload extension name is equal to cog and that's really your whole command but i'm just going to go ahead and put await interaction dot response dot send message just so we can have that message of you know we know that it actually loaded or not um, so let's do successfully reloaded let's put it in bold and we'll do cog.py. Um, and yeah, so that's really our whole command. Let's go ahead and restart the bot. And this will be the last time you have to restart your bot. Um, everything else in cogs is able to be refreshed through the reload command. 
Um, command name is invalid. Where is the command name invalid? Give me a second. <coughs> Oh, sorry. It's because I put this as capitalized. That's right. They all need to be lowercase. So let's go ahead and just lowercase these. I forget that Discord's weird about the naming convention of the parameters. Um, let's try it again. And okay, so now going back right now, um, let's go ahead and change it. So let's go over to Visual Studio Code. So right now, when it's loaded up, it should return with Hello World. Let's go ahead and put it on Hello. Um, and then head over back to Discord. So right now, if I run hello, it should say hello world. Then if I do reload cog1, it says I reloaded cog1.py. And now if I do hello, you'll see it says hello. So we're actually able to update it in real time, which is extremely useful when going through your code. Um, this is extremely helpful. I mean, I cannot emphasize how much time this has saved me when making my bots and going through different things. This is extremely nice. Now, one last thing that I want to go over is what happens if there's an error in your file. Like, you know, when you're um, running a file and you get a syntax error or some type of error in your code, what happens then? Well, let's go ahead and explore that. So if we go over to Visual Studio Code and inside of our COG1 class, if we just put an F right here, which will obviously throw an error, and then we try to reload it, um, reload. Oh, actually, I don't know if I saved the class. Let me go back and make sure it's saved. File saved. Okay. Um, and then we try to reload it, you'll see we just get stuck here and then it says interaction failed, or the application did not respond to me. And then if we go back, you'll see in uh, Visual Studio Code, we actually have the error here down in console. So that's fine if you want to just leave it like that, but I'd rather have, you know, I I like to avoid this application did not respond at, at, at all possible. Like if I can avoid that, then I'm going to try my best to do so. So let's go back and just put a quick little error handle for all exceptions that'll actually send the exception to the user that's trying to reload it. So if we go back here, let's just do put this inside of a try and accept statement. So try, if you don't know what, what a try and accept statement is, it'll try to run the code. This is the best way to explain it. It'll try to run the code that's under the state under the statement. And then did I spell accept wrong? Accept, sorry. And then if it can't, if there's some type of error, then it'll run this accept statement. But if it runs fine, then the accept statement will never run. So let's do accept exception, which will catch all exceptions as E. And then we're going to do await interaction.response.send message. And we're going to say failed. Um, could not reload this cog class. C error below. Then we do slash in to go to the next line and just place the error inside of three graves, which we'll just put it format a little better and then upstream this so we can put the E. So E is representing the error. So we'll actually put the error inside of the message in the user's um, response inside of Discord. So, <coughs> excuse me. So let's go ahead and try this now. If I, well, let's first, let's fix the file and then I'll mess it up. So let's go ahead and run this. Everything should be fine. And as soon as it loads, I'm gonna put an error. I'm just gonna put an F here. Um, so we're all loaded up. Let's put an F here, save it. And now if we go back to Discord and then try to do reload, reload cog one. Now it says failed, could not reload this cog class, see error below, and it tells us the error below. Um, so yeah, I much rather that. This is how I design all my reload commands and it is extremely helpful. Do it however you want. There's a bunch of different things that you can do with this. Um, but I think just having this very, very simple command is a nice base for any bot like when i create my bot classes this is the very first command that i add to every single bot and they all have it and also i would recommend restricting this command to only be able to be used by you um you can do this through command permissions um I'm blinking on the word what's the word um decorators that's the word okay yeah you can restrict this with permission decorators that you can create or I want to quickly show you guys something else on how to restrict a command to a certain um, people, role, channel, whatever. Um, this is just going to be a little thing not really related to the video, but I do want to show you guys just in case you didn't know. So if you go up here to your server, press server settings, and you scroll down to integrations and go over to your bot. When you press on it, you'll see roles and members, channels, commands, and then just the permissions that you've given it and the webhooks. So if you go up here to roles and members by default, so everything that's right here is by default. So 
if I like by default don't want any member or role uh, to run commands then I can just press no on this save changes and then if I'm just a regular user coming into the server then I won't be able to see any slash commands um, if you want to make it so only certain people can do it what I would do is I would put at everyone to no, and then I would come in here and say I only want admin role to be able to run commands I would just, uh, choose admin and then press save changes so now only admins can see all commands if you want to switch it to certain commands then if you come down here and say hello then you can put channel or role overrides so I can say okay I want only moderators to be able to run the hello command so right now how I have it is it's a little bit complicated because there's so many different sections but right now so I have these three commands so for these three commands um, if you're just a normal person coming in you can't see anything if you're an admin you can see all of them and then if you're a moderator you can just see this one and then also you can do channel restrictions so if you don't want them to be able to run any channels um, or just specific channels you can do that as well and it's not that it'll throw an error if you're like not following one of these things it's simply just the command won't show up so if you run slash the command simply just won't show up in that channel which is super super nice you don't have to worry about people running commands when they shouldn't be because it literally just it doesn't show up for them so they can't run the command anyway i just thought i would throw it in there it's really useful i still recommend having some type of command permission handler inside of your uh, code as well just for that second level of security but if you want to completely rely on this as long as you set up correctly this works so much better than any command permission handler as well anyways that was just a little bit detachment from the video hopefully this reload command is super helpful to you guys it has been extremely helpful in me creating bots and i know it will help you guys out too but yeah with that being said that's it for the video sorry for the shorter video but just thought i'd get this really important command out there for you guys um thank you guys for watching hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day if you liked it make sure to sub and drop a like and join this discord this all these videos are recorded inside of my own discord server and I've actually just been doing some revamping to the Discord and editing the bot that is used to run the Discord. So join the Discord up. If you need help with your code, there's a code help thread where we help all the different members in this community um, with your code. So if you, have, if you have any questions, put it in the code help and that's how I can help you guys out and people in the community can help you guys out. So yeah, join the Discord. And um, also, just thought I'd mention right now, I am working on my personal website, which will be which will have my portfolio, all my different works, and how you guys can actually order Discord bots from me. Which is going to be really nice. I'm still working on it, so nothing finalized yet, but I just thought I'd mention that. So yeah, if that's something that you guys are excited for, let me know down in the comments. Uh, also, what videos you guys want to see, let me know. Um, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. Peace out.